Hello everyone, my name is Dorian, and tonight, we are solving FNAF using Artificial Intelligence. I know many people have claimed to solve FNAF, but I have gone out and collected the greatest minds in the FNAF community together to create this trifecta of theories. Thanks to the help of John from FNAF, MatPat, and Markiplier, we have successfully found and connected all of the secrets that hide within this game. First, I want to introduce John from the channel FNAF. He will be sharing our first theory of this video. Take it away, John. Dialogue generated by ChatGPT. Hey there, FNAF fam. Welcome back to the channel, where we unravel the mysteries of Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm your host, FreddyFanatic87, and today, we've got a theory that's going to take you on a wild ride. But before we dive in head first into this enigma, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. We've got a theory that's going to leave you in awe. Alright folks, today we're tackling a burning question that's haunted us FNAF fans for ages. Is Golden Freddy the key to everything? Need more proof? You're in for a treat. Let's kick things off with a bang. Remember the bite of 87? That gruesome incident that scared us all? Well, what if I told you that Golden Freddy was there, lurking in the shadows, ready to reveal a shocking truth? Need more proof? Let's dig deeper. You might be thinking, Golden Freddy? Really? But hear me out. Have you ever wondered why the animatronics come alive at night to torment the security guards? Could it be that Golden Freddy has a hand in this malevolent plan? Need more proof? Let's explore the evidence. Throughout the FNAF series, we've seen Golden Freddy appearing mysteriously in various forms. Some believe these appearances are intentional, a way for Golden Freddy to communicate a hidden message. Are we missing vital clues hidden in plain sight? Hold on to your seats, because here comes the twist you've all been waiting for. What if Golden Freddy isn't just one entity, but a collective spirit made up of lost souls seeking vengeance? Need more proof? Brace yourselves. Remember the Happiest Day minigame in FNAF 3? It's a pivotal moment in the series. Some theorists suggest that this minigame is the key to unraveling Golden Freddy's true nature. Could it be a ceremony to free the trapped souls within? A twist so shocking it'll leave you speechless? Now, let's turn our attention to one of the most iconic phrases in FNAF lore. It's me. What if this phrase is a message from the souls trapped in Golden Freddy, desperately trying to communicate? Need more proof? This one's a game changer. It's Me appears throughout the series, often linked to Golden Freddy's appearance. Could it be the soul's way of telling us that they're still here? Still trapped? Still seeking justice? This theory goes way deeper than you can imagine. And now, here's the twist that will blow your mind. What if Golden Freddy isn't the villain, but the hero of the story? Need more proof? Stay with me. Some theorists believe that Golden Freddy's actions are driven by a desire to stop the cycle of violence and set things right. What if it's the unsung hero trying to protect the security guards from a far greater evil within Freddy Fazbear's Pizza? There you have it, FNAF fam! Our mind-boggling theory about the true role of Golden Freddy in the Five Nights at Freddy's universe. But remember, these are just theories, and the beauty of FNAF is in the mystery. Don't forget to share your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that bell to stay up to date with all things FNAF. Until next time, keep theorizing my fellow FNAF enthusiasts, and remember, need more proof? Stay curious. Thank you, John, for sharing our first theory of the night. Your insights about the puppet left us informed, and your evidence towards the truth behind Golden Freddy was insightful. Our next guest needs no introduction. Everyone, welcome MatPat to the stage to present our second theory. Dialogue generated by ChatGBT.
Hey gamers, welcome back to The Game Theorist. Today, we're diving into the enigmatic world of Five Nights at Freddy's Pizzeria Simulator to unravel the mysterious meaning behind the Midnight Motorist minigame. Prepare for a mind-blowing theory backed up by solid evidence. If you haven't already, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for more mind-bending theories like this one. Alright, let's set the scene. In the Midnight Motorist minigame, we play as an unknown character, represented by a purple car, who is trying to sneak out of the house at midnight. But who is this character, and why is he trying to escape under the cover of darkness? Our first key point centers around the purple car itself. Could this be a subtle nod to the purple guy, the infamous antagonist of the FNAF series? Evidence from previous games suggests that purple guy, also known as William Afton, is the main antagonist and the father of Michael Afton. This connection could lead us to believe that the Midnight Motorist minigame is, in fact, a representation of William Afton's backstory. Notice how the car has a distinctive purple hue similar to Purple Guy's color palette. Coincidence? I think not. It's Scott Cawthon after all. Everything in the FNAF universe has a hidden meaning. Now, let's focus on the mysterious location of the Midnight Motorist minigame. The house the character sneaks out of is adjacent to Junior's, a bar known for serving up fruity drinks and bad pizza. But Junior's may not be just any ordinary bar. Could it possibly be connected to the infamous Freddy Fazbear's Pizza? If you remember, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is notorious for its animatronics and of course, the tragic incidents involving missing children. This bar's proximity to the house raises questions about the character's involvement with Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Was he a former employee? Or could he be connected to the dark secrets behind the restaurant's haunting history? Brace yourselves for a twist, theorists. In this minigame, we also encounter a mysterious character referred to as Orange Man, watching TV in his house. Some speculate this figure to be Michael Afton, the protagonist of Sister Location. But what if I told you that Orange Man is actually Henry Emily, the co-founder of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and the creator of the animatronics? Now this might sound far-fetched, but think about it. The Midnight Motorist minigame could be hinting at a deeper connection between Henry and Purple Guy. Their intertwined fate and actions could be what sparks the whole tragic saga of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. So, to wrap it all up, the Midnight Motorist minigame in Five Nights at Freddy's Pizzeria Simulator might just be hidden origin story for the Purple Guy, revealing his ties to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and his connection to Henry and Emily. As always, these are just theories, but ones rooted in solid evidence from the game. Thanks for joining us today on The Game Theorist. Remember to comment below and let us know your thoughts in this theory. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all of our future FNAF content. Until next time, remember, it's all just a game. A theory game. Thanks for reading. And remember to stay tuned for more mind-blowing theories here on The Game Theorist. Well presented, Matt Pat. As always, that was a very fascinating theory. And you heard him, folks. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more thrilling FNAF content. Now, last but not least, I want to pass the mic off to my good friend Markiplier to share our last theory of the night. Dialogue generated by Novel AI. Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier and welcome to this week's installment of Theorizing with Mark. This week's target of theorizing is going to be Five Nights at Freddy's. Prepare to have your minds blown as you hear the intense revelations and insane connections I have made to different corners of FNAF's lore. Without any further ado, let's get into this week's installment of Theorizing with Mark. My theory starts at the beginning, at the very first FNAF game, where we meet three people named Michael Afton, Henry Emily, and William Afton. We'll dive into William Afton a bit later, but for now, let's focus on his two sons, Mike and Elizabeth, which in the games are never given names. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, wait, Mark, why is the father also not called William, since those names are the male version of the same name? But Mark, William never married Mrs. Afton. This is where it starts to get crazy. So back to William, he is the founder and owner of Fazbear Frights, 
and other smaller versions of Freddy Fazbear's. And yet, after the bite incident of Fazbear Frights, the company went broke for reasons unknown. So how did he get the money to open all these establishments if he lost every single one of them except Freddy Fazbear's original building? That brings me back to Henry Emily. You see, Henry used to own most of the restaurants when it was still starting up, until he had to sell everything in order to open his last place, Freddy Fazbear's. However, in Purple Guy Tapes 321, it says that there is a third-party investigator behind Freddy's original location. One, William Afton. Now some might be wondering, Mark, why are you always theorizing about thousand dollars per night job? And not like, the first five games and others? I'll get to that after we do introductions, don't worry. After looking around with the Purple Guy tapes, I find out that in addition to his being an investor, he also was working on special projects for Freddy's with Mr. Emily while he was working with them. It then gets crazier when we look at the names. There's this game modded on my computer called FNAF Security Breach, where I meet Vanny or Glitchtrap. Don't spoil any more of that lore, you are already f***ed up so much. Anyway, this is important. He calls himself a father and says that you killed him, and your father in Five Nights at Freddy's. Which makes me ask myself, who died from getting stabbed during Phone Dude's recordings in Sister Location? It's no one other than Elizabeth and Mike's brother. But wait a minute, what happens if they die in the third game's endings? And they take over the robot bodies. But who will take over Michael Afton? And who will take over Elizabeth's? Easy. Michael has a son named Michael Jr. And Eliza was a little girl in a family of boys. Her only connection to the animatronics was Elizabeth because she wasn't in a boy-filled house. He wanted to be the only child. That's why Elizabeth got possessed and not Michael Jr. That's why Michael Afton got stung by bees. <laughs> That also explains why in the Purple Guy tapes, he was scared to turn a corner because he saw a suit of animatronic parts and not just the Spring Bonnie suit. It's Michael's kids. He knows his actions killed two of his sons and traumatized his surviving child. That's the truth to why Michael wears the mask. He doesn't want to see his rotting corpse face. So to conclude this episode of Theorizing, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and if you did enjoy, then please, Hit like subscribe to keep up to date with my other FNAF videos coming up soon. But if you're really liking these theories, then you should try making some yourself, or come chat with me on my Twitch streams at twitch.tv slash the ego of gotcha. If you can't watch Twitch, here's a link to my channel that you can use. Thanks again, have a nice day, and as always, I will never forget you! With that being said, he pressed play on the video and walked out of frame, leaving the camera all alone to record an empty white wall, until someone wearing a purple outfit passed the frame quickly before running back, giving off an aura of bloodlust, as if looking directly into the eyes of the camcorder. <laughs> However, as soon as that happened, Mark reappeared in front of the camera and stopped recording, unaware. Um, was that supposed to happen? Guys, was that in the script? Mark, are you okay? Mark, blink twice if you need help. Okay, anyways, that concludes tonight's presentation. I want to thank you all for coming out and listening to our presenters. And if you did enjoy, please consider subscribing. It helps out a ton and gets me closer to my goal of doubling my subscribers this year. And, of course, most importantly, have a good night everybody, and thank you for tuning in.